No, it doesn't sound a bit dodgy, Danny. It sounds absolutely f***ing fake. Hello. Fresh is the sponsor of today's episode. This video is brought to you by HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 10 blaze to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's a lot of free meals. You're going to be very full, although I suppose you're not going to eat them all at once. This is Business Blaze. I am your boy with the blaze. Welcome back. I have no idea when you're watching this, but this is the first video that I'm recording. In fact, it is Monday, the 4th of January. I was gonna say November for some stupid reason. I don't know why. Uh, I hope you had a great Christmas or holidays or whatever the f celebrate and a happy new year. Or if you haven't, I mean, I know some people, I've gotta be inclusive, you know? It's 2021. Some people celebrate the new year in like March. <laughs> so what the f uh, What happens here is uh, Danny shall write a script. I shall read the script. Sam shall add some memes and do some video editing stuff, which uh, is just fantastic. This is recent inventions that nobody else, nobody asked for. Business plays, something nobody asked for. And yet here we are. Do you ever wor worry that when you don't do something for a while, like it's been a couple of weeks, and I'm like, do I remember how to blaze? How do I blaze again? What is business, Blaze? What do I do when I don't use the teleprompter? And then you start doing it and you're immediately like, oh yeah. That's how. It's like riding a bike. Except once when I was a kid, I didn't ride a bike for a while. I forgot how. I must be the only person who has forgotten how to ride a bike. I've long been worried. <clears throat> COVID? I've long been worried by the theory that I've been dead for years and years. It's just that nobody ever really noticed. Better check on Danny. Hold on. How, what is going on, Danny? How are we starting this today? The big giveaway is that my hands are often as freezing cold as a pair you might expect to find loosely attached to a corpse. Why are the hands loosely attached to a corpse? Surely they'd be just as attached as before, unless what caused the person to die was the detachment of the hands. And then reattachment, but not very well, so that they were loose. Am I reading into this too much, Danny? What's going on? Who are you? Last time we were talking about your business trips to the Philippines. Am I six? <laughs> I once attended a big presentation during my time working at the Royal Bank of Scotland. <laughs> I accidentally said Scotland with a Scottish accent there, and I don't know why. Royal Bank of Scotland. You just made an enemy for life. I can't remember exactly what it was about. I probably wasn't even meant to have been invited. But at the close of the meeting, the speaker took the time to shake everybody's hand and thank them for attending. I know they're trying to be like all like a good boss, like thanks for coming to the meeting, thanks for coming to the meeting. It's just like I just just dismiss us. <laughs> like if I if I ever host meetings, and I don't like I don't have any. I have one or two meetings a week on the phone and that's literally it because I hate meetings. I, I would just, there'd be people sitting around a table and I'd just say dismissed and everyone would leave and that's how it would be. And everyone would be like, Simon's a bit of a dick. He's not very friendly. He never shakes my hand. And it's like, well, Simon doesn't like shaking your hands because they're covered in feces. And I don't mean that like they're not literally covered in feces, but you go to the toilet, there's feces floating around the place. I don't like touching things. I'm like the guy and people make fun of me for this, but I stand by a hundred percent. Like, my family made fun of me for years because I wouldn't use the Dyson hand dryers. You know the ones where it's like, you put your hands in and you go like, do, do you have these in America or is this just a, a European thing? You put your hands in the top, you slide them in, and then you pull them out slowly. All the while, the machine is going like... <laughs> I'm not putting my hands in there because all that's doing is spraying, like, someone who hasn't used soap to wash their hands, feces all around the place and into my beard and into my mouth and up my nose. And I'm just saying, like, don't use that. And then I'm the guy, so it's like, I'll finish peeing if I'm in a stall or I've taken a shit or whatever. And I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll mount that shit and I'll flush it with my foot. And then I'll, like, use my foot to bring down the toilet seat. And then I'll use my foot to open the door. And then I'll use my foot to open the other door. And I don't feel, I mean, I know you might be thinking this is a bit ridiculous. But look, whoever is out there, <laughs> like, I get you, Simon. We would be good friends. What is going on? Why am I doing this? Where am I? I have forgotten how to blaze. Oh, no. In the comments, it's like, Simon, just, you don't have to read Daddy Street. You don't have to. You can just rant and we'll watch. It's not okay. It's a bit weird, but all right. Uh, when he was shaking my hand, oh my God, did we really get there? Did we really? We're going to be here forever. While he was shaking my hand, he suddenly recalled in horror and shrieks, Oh my God, are you all right? Your hand is like a block of ice. What's wrong with you? That was extremely impolite and unprofessional. I probably should have just made my excuses and walked away, but I suddenly felt compelled to try and shake hands with everybody else in the room so that I could, so that I could canvas opinion on my hand temperature, leading to one of my so socially awkward conclusions to a presentation in history. Danny, you didn't do that. Why are you always lying? Oh my god, stop fucking lying.
Opinions seem to be quite divided. He did. I'm slapping myself in the face right now as I write this script and my hands feel pretty warm to me. Some people commented at the time that my hands possibly just react in quite an extreme way to cold temperature. And this presentation happens after the great credit crunch of 2008, so it's quite likely that the Royal Bank of Scotland couldn't afford to turn on the heating anymore. If only somebody had invented a product capable of keeping your hands warm when the temperature gets a bit nippy. Well, in 2011, the Seattle-based company Archie McPhee did just that when they launched Handapants. This totally exists. They're called skiing gloves. I mean, they're a bit impractical and massive, but I mean, I mean, skiing gloves with the, you know, the batteries that heat up your hands. This product is essentially a pair of fingerless underpants for your hands that look and feel exactly like a pair of briefs, cast crafted from 95% breathable cotton and 5% spandex for stretchability. I suspect that the company may have had its tongue planted firmly in cheek when it runs through some of the hundreds of different uses for underpants, including sanitary handshakes, cooking, construction work, and night blogging. What? I don't understand the joke. Well, I mean, maybe I do. It's fairly weak. And also, isn't this a serious invention? And the marketing video goes slightly over the top when the presenter declares, Talk about sexy. You're gonna have to hold the ladies back after you get a glance at these tighty whities Wait, are these gloves or underpants? What is going on? I'm so confused. Of course, it could be argued that the existence of the glove rendered this new product useless before it even hit the market. And the added bonus of wearing a proper glove is that you don't walk around looking like you've become deeply confused while trying to get dressed in the morning. I guess maybe we'll put a picture here and everyone else will know what's going on. Danny, I could have used a picture in the script, to be quite honest. <laughs> I'm not the- not that you don't paint a beautiful picture of these in my mind, but right now I'm just picturing some sort of gloves that look like Calvin Klein underwear. But even though Hansapants largely seem to be a silly gag gift, the product appears to have turned into something of a bizarre success story, and you can still pick up a pair online for only $10. What a bargain! At least Archie McPhee doesn't appear to take themselves or their product too seriously. The same can't always be said for the long list of products that are so frighteningly ridiculous, the results are enough to send a furious shiver down your spine. We'll see about that, Danny. I very rarely get furious. I was assembling some Ikea furniture over the break. And uh, at one point, I'm trying to put this board in. And I'm like, Ikea furniture, normally it's like very simple. You put it together, no worries. There's this one. And it's like, yeah, just put this piece of dowel in there and then slide that onto that. And I'm like, look, it's difficult. So obviously I'm doing something wrong because it's Ikea. And I checked the instructions a thousand times and I'm like, no, it's supposed to be in there. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to really force it in because that's how it should be. And then, yeah, the dowel just pushes through the, like, the nice outside bit. And now there's a big hole on the outside of my chest of drawers. And I'm like, that's brilliant. And I read the instructions again. I'm like, I did this correctly. What you, Ikea? Hashtag Ikea. The color changing e ink dress. This sounds brilliant. I'm sure we all remember the viral internet sensation that was the photograph of the dress in 2015. Hell, that was six years ago. Jesus Christ, which sparked global debate over what color it was supposed to be. Some argue that the dress was clearly black and royal blue. Yeah, dumb people, it was clearly gold and white. While others insisted that any fool could see that it was white and gold. Interestingly, there's no scientific consensus on how the photograph managed to trigger such an extreme difference in color perception. And it's so far proved impossible to replicate the effect in such a compelling way as the original photograph. It could have something also, I mean, it wasn't, everyone found this so interesting. And I, I like, I'm sarcastic about how it was clearly white and gold, but it was kind of like a photo that looked a bit like both and it was kind of shot in shitty lighting. And it's like, I, I mean, most importantly, who the f cares? It could have something to do with differences in how the human brain perceives and processes color, or bearing in mind that the manufacturers officially confirmed the colors of the dress as black and royal blue, it could be that 43% of the world's population are wrong. But what if the same dress could be both sets of colors at once, or even every damn color on the wheel? And it's like, yes. Okay, so they say it was black, black and royal blue. But then that doesn't mean that necessarily it looks that way when the camera takes the photograph. Because, I mean, all colour is just our brain doing f It's like, I I'm going to absolutely get this wrong. But it's like, if something's red, right? Like my red Solo cups. If it's red, that means it's o the only colour that it's not absorbing isn't red. The red is being bounced off and into your eyes. So it's not, nothing is really, I'm gonna shut up because I'm not a scientist. Uh, the Japanese company Dai Nippon Printing Co. unveiled their color changing dress at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in 2018. I have actually, I've actually seen this and it's really boxy and weird looking. Uh, for a power from just a single AA battery, the high-tech dress was capable of cycling through a glittering sequence of patterns and colors 
for three whole days before you'd need to charge it up again. Or just replace the single AA battery. They're not expensive. It was a product designed in conjunction with e-ink, the dudes that provide the nice paper-like displays for Kindle screens via the use of tiny micro capsules suspended in a liquid which is encased in a film layer. The micro, micro capsules contain positively charged white particles and negatively charged black particles, so applying different electrical fields to different parts of the screen results in those soothing monochromatic displays. The e-ink prism is a new colorful variant on the idea which can shift through seven different colors when a current is applied. And Dynapon Printing felt that one of the best ways to show off this new technology was via the medium of a fashion garment, potentially bringing a whole new meaning to the term wardrobe malfunction. Ba -bum -bum. We're probably still some ways off of the e-ink dress, hitting the racks of Primark. Aside from being massively expensive, they haven't yet figured out how to incorporate the technology into a wearable garment. A giant Primark just recently opened near my house, and I was like, brilliant. I mean, I, I generally don't like this, uh, uh, like, I don't like fast fashion. It is a f environmental catastrophe and i'm no like environmental hero like if if my recycling bin's full it's like all right look, that bit of plastic is gonna go in the bin and i'll take the recycling tomorrow i'm not gonna put the recycling the plastic recycling aside and then put it in the bin tomorrow that going in the regular trash i'm not a hero but fast fashion is such a train wreck environmentally there's like that and Primark. But it's perhaps a worrying glimpse into the future when our clothes will almost certainly become digital display screens. Th that's gonna be awesome. What are you talking about? <laughs> you won't, you'll just buy one business place t-shirt and then I'll license out the designs. And then people can pirate them and everything, which will Okay, f this. Uh, the human race may well evolve into walking digital billboards, getting paid loads of money to promote Raid Shadow Legends. They would, wouldn't they? Someone sent me a brilliant uh, graphic. It was like of the Queen giving a speech on, um, you know, you might not know. In the UK every year, the Queen gives a very boring speech that my granddad used to make us watch. And I've never watched since because f that. On Christmas Eve, the Queen, or on Christmas Day or whatever, the Queen gives a speech. And she's like, oh gosh, the country's been doing very badly this year. COVID has been tearing up. <laughs> and someone sent me this brilliant image and it's like where the subtitles go. <laughs> and it's like, just before we get, just before we get started onto the Queen's message this year, this uh, message is brought to you by Red Shadow Legends. And she was wearing a very typical Queen green dress and someone had green screens, the Raid Shadow Legends sh and I'm like, Mwah! While nipping to the shops for a packet of Lucky Strikes, we might even follow in the footsteps of Sam, our resident memeologist. He's not really resident. Uh, I mean, he is in the basement. And learn how to communicate with each other by just bringing up relevant memes on our t-shirts. This will be cool. I actually look forward to this. Perhaps a slightly more interesting use of the Ian Prism tech. People will be pirating. <laughs> be like, you'll have a changeable shirt. You'll like pirate the Armani logo. <laughs> Perhaps a slightly more interesting use of the Ian Prism technology could be found in the walls of your future home. The set at the same Las Vegas show, Dynapon Printing also revealed living walls which cycle through different shapes and colors and can even react to your breath and body temperature to perform certain functions such as turning on the lights. Wait, how does that work? So you're like, <laughs> that means turn on the light. Ah, I wet myself. That means, uh, well, you know, open the toilet door. <laughs> I gotta change. Uh, assuming that unlike me, you have a body temperature. But boom, boom, now that could potentially save a fortune for those idiots who insist on redecorating the whole house every season. No one does that. No one redecorates the house every season. Do they? The car exhaust grill. That sounds awesome, but horrible at the same time. Like, if they can, if you can grill off your car and it not tastes like ass, I'd be into that. I'm always up for the idea of multitasking and saving time. Right now, I'm writing the script while vacuuming the basement, bleeding the radiator, and preparing a nice mushroom stroganoff for dinner. I guess he must be picking the weird mushrooms that go in the basement, because I definitely don't provide him any. But how much time would you save if your car could cook a burger on your behalf while you were driving? That's the fabulous idea behind the car exhaust grill, created by a group of Iranian chefs in 2015, and released by the Ruhola Merik. Kapoor brands. It's essentially a little isolated. Look, if they want to break through into the rep, into the West, they might just consider rebranding themselves like RM or something. Just saying. It's essentially a little isolated meat pocket attached to a holder which you slot into your exhaust pipe. That is no, come on, that is nasty. I mean, um, how big is your exhaust pipe going to be? What are you going to do? Cook a cocktail sausage? This, um, I mean, all you need to do is shove a raw patty into the meat pocket, take the car out for a quick spin, and by the time you've reached the local bookies at the other end of town. That sounds like something that'll be happening in Iran. <laughs> You'll have a delicious burger waiting for you. I have no idea if they can gamble in Iran, 
but I don't imagine them as like the freest country in the world. And I feel like I live in a fairly free country and it's like you can't gamble online like roulette and shit. You can bet on sports, I think, but most online gambling is not allowed. And I'd say fairly sensibly. As I say cooked to perfection, the inventors claim that the cunning design of the isolated meat pocket prevents any exhaust smoke from hitting the burger so there's no risk of eating heavily polluted meat. But I would never feel entirely comfortable with the idea of cooking a burger right next to an exhaust pipe and I'll usually eat any old shit. You also have to wonder what kind of person feels that his hectic lifestyle in the fast lane doesn't give him any free time to devote to cooking a burger. Yes, yet is perfectly happy to piss about slapping raw meat next to his exhaust pipe. We really don't have to do this. You're in a car. Just drive to bloody McDonald's. Yeah, Danny, look, not everyone can afford McDonald's. Nah, that's a lie. <laughs> and if you can't afford it, just go with today's sponsor, Hello! Fresh. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's up? Do you ever find yourself in a recipe rut? Oh boy, do I. Well, you can break out of that. Break out of your self-imposed prison with HelloFresh. Plus, it'll save you time. What? Apparently, according to their research, an average trip to the grocery store takes 41, we call that a supermarket, takes 41 minutes. I mean, that doesn't even include cooking all Yeah, I mean, the problem with the grocery store is you go there and it's like, yeah, what am I going to cook? Well, it's Tuesday, so let's cook tacos. And then you go to the foreign food section and you buy some tacos and you buy some onions and you buy some beef and you're like, mmm, I'm going to make some delicious tacos. And then you, you've got everything in your basket and then you're like, I'd love some sour cream to go along with these. And then you get to the section and say, oh no, we're out of sour cream because I'm just in the local supermarket, not the big one. And I say, okay, brilliant. So you've already spent like time in the supermarket and then you got to go to the corner store or whatever to buy some sour cream and it's like by the time you get home 17 hours have passed by and you're in the kitchen and then you still got to cook the f***ing meal i've lost control of my life but that's not all what else what else oh yeah this is legit you might be thinking like okay well i'm gonna order hello fresh i'm gonna get on the plan I'm going to be getting out of my recipe rut. I'm going to be abandoning the 41 minutes in the grocery store. But Simon, I care about the environment. I am a good person. I am a kind soul. What am I to do with all of the packaging that arrives? It's in boxes. There's plastic within boxes, within plastic, within paper. It's a disaster. No. Well, don't worry. Let me assuage. Assuage? Assange? Julian Assange, your guilt by telling you this. HelloFresh ships your food in almost entire, entire, almost entirely in recyclable material and or material that has got recycled content in it. Well, I'd be a bit like, guys, if you're not using any recycled material, it's like, yeah, 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 all of the cardboard is just fresh chopped down trees. I'd be like, get your shit together. But it's good that they do that, I have to say. So you can feel less guilty about it. Also, HelloFresh is flexible. You can change your delivery days, which is fantastic. Because it's like, I mean, going to the grocery store f***ing sucks. But what's worse is when it's like, yeah, 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 you got a delivery. It's coming at 9. And it's like at 8.15 in the morning, the delivery guy's like, hey, hey, are you there? And it's like, no, you said at 9. I'm not at work yet. F*** off. And then he's like, oh, i got to come back the next day. And it's like, I really wanted that today. Well... Not with HelloFresh, it's easy, it's better! And oh yeah, so if you just want to skip a week, I don't know, maybe you're going on a holiday, vacation, whatever. And you're like, look, that week, I'm out. I'm gonna subsist on gin and tonics and ribs that entire week. Not judging, I'll be there as well. Uh, you can skip HelloFresh and then get back on your like health train when you get home. Because on holiday, it doesn't count. Further, if you were thinking, mm, I'm so privileged, I'm so rich that I can get HelloFresh. Just delivered to your with 10 bit meat meals for free. <laughs> Maybe you don't need to be. About getting food delivered to your door. What about all the people who can't? What about all the people who don't have all the food they need? Well, let me Julian Assange your guilt again. Because with HelloFresh, they've donated 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019, and they've stepped that up in 2020. I guess that talking point's a bit old because it's now 2021. But because of COVID, they were like, let's do better. And they did. Look, I can't get this. You might be thinking, I bet Sus <laughs> Simon clearly loves this HelloFresh. Honestly, never tried it. Because I don't live in the land of the brave and the home of the free. The home of the free and the land of the brave. Whatever. America. The United States of America. The US. The USA. I don't live there. So Davin, who I do the Today I Found Out channel with, was like, dude, I got this sponsor coming up for Business Place. Could I just send this to you? And he was like, free food? Yeah. And he tried it, and I was like, Dave, and was it good? And he was like, it's easy, it's delicious! 
and he never lies like a Vulcan. So there you have it. It says mandatory talking point. Talk about how you tried it. And I'm like, I literally can't. You didn't send it to me. And if you did, it'd be moldy by the time it got here and disgusting. It'd be like in customs for six weeks. Customs would be sending me letters being like, look, something's wrong. The fucking prawns. It smells like old prawns in the customs office, Whistler. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 10Blaze for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Repeat call to action. Okay. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 10Blaze to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Let's get back to it. <coughs> COVID? I do have like a, a, a cough or like a sore throat. It's probably not COVID, I'm probably fine. The double-decker couch. If you've ever seen the classic 2014 film, The Lego Movie, I haven't. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assuming that Simon probably hasn't. Danny and I, same page. You might remember that the lead character, Emmett, famously came up with a double-decker couch as his first ever invention. Fascinating. I have seen the film Step Brothers, where they make the double-decker bed with loads of room for activities. It's an extremely funny movie. So many robots in here. So many activities. Although his peers initially pour scorn on him for coming up with such a silly idea, the double-decker couch ends up saving Emmett and his acronyl Oh my god, what is that? I guess this is the material that Lego is made from. Acron Lona trial butadine styrene based buddies from drowning. They're plastic, they can't drown. The concept pretty much takes the concept of bunk beds and transports it into the living room. I used to share a bunk bed with my older brother when I was a very little kid. He always got to sleep on the top bunk, purely on the ground, so that he was older than me. That's how it works, Danny. And the experience isn't very exciting when you're relegated to the lower bunk. It's like sleeping in a normal bed, except you have to put up with the constant eerie creaking noises from above. When we moved into separate bedrooms a little later in life, we always bagged the bigger room as well, again because he was the oldest and needed more space. Well, he is older and bigger, Danny. Look, I was the older sibling. So, like, I'm, I'm definitely not on Danny's side on this one. The problem with this policy is that when I reached an age at which I needed more space myself, he still had the biggest bedroom because he was still the oldest. It's not like I ever got the chance to catch up. Ridiculous. There's a lesson there, Danny. Be born first. But anyway, let's get back to the point. The American comedy Expand Furniture was inspired by the Lego movie to take all the glorious fun of bunk beds and park it in front of the television, all for about $3,500. Look, a couple of things here. Many things here. <laughs> One, if you live in an apartment that is so small that you need double deck a couch, you can't afford $3,500. I mean, unless you like live in Hong Kong or some um, or Manhattan, maybe. No, even then. Even then. <laughs> Two, people who can buy a couch for $3,500 don't generally have like 20 year old roommates who would think this is fun. But for all of the YouTube creators who live in hype houses, this is perfect. You created a brilliant product for Jake Paul. As Emmett himself points out in the movie, one of the great advantages of the double decker couch is that it creates more comfortable seating during those busy times when you have quite a few friends visiting at once. Now, nobody needs to sit on the floor, they can just climb the ladder and hop on the top deck of the couch. You like guacamole? When we're sitting on the floor over a problem, get a bean bag, get a pillow. What is going on? Although the product is still available to buy today, the emphasis appears to have changed slightly as the marketing now focuses on promoting a couch which can also be transformed into bunk beds. It's possible that Expand Furniture discovered a few downsides of the double decker couch. For starters, it makes conversation very awkward as everyone appears to be taking part in an episode of University Challenge. But more importantly, the people sitting on the top deck would have to sit like Buddha all the time, otherwise their dangling legs would keep booting the other people sitting in the bottom deck right in the face. If they didn't make it high enough, I guess then you have to have really high ceilings. So this is just a sh idea all round. Also, it seems dangerous. Still, maybe some of these teething problems can be an ironed out when they inevitably get round to designing the triple decker couch. Don't do it, please don't. The Treadmobile. Romanian de decathlete Alex Astelian was on a mission to make exercise routines more interesting. In 2007, the very idea of spending any great length of time pounding along on a road to nowhere on the treadmill at your local gym seems monotonous, spirit crushing, and not particularly scenic unless you happen to enjoy the sight of other sweaty people panting for breath. It's 2021, just put your iPhone in the little slot and watch some YouTube videos. Maybe you're doing that right now. If so, hello, keep on grinding, good job. You're almost there, old chap. What if you could escape the suffocating four walls of the gym and take exercise to the great outdoors? I bet nobody ever thought of that before. And Alex had come up with a particularly cunning approach. The treadmobile was an outdoor version of the treadmill, which used human force to actually move it forward like a proper vehicle. So if you fancied popping down to the shops for a four pack of super strength lager, you just topped on the conveyor belt of the big chunky treadmobile and powered it up by running frantically on the spot to reach your destination in style. This is the dumbest 
that I've ever heard of. Like, just go on foot. I mean, what is going on? This is so stupid. I don't, this must be a joke. It does seem like one of the most inherently wrong inventions of all time. If you really fancy using your legs to get to the shops, why not just go for a run or get on a bike? Exactly. Or just, you know, f walk. I mean, how else are we going to get there? F handstands all the way. That would surely be a far more effective and cheaper approach than wheeling out this ridiculous monstrosity, which I suspect has more than a few issues when it comes to accurate steering or emergency braking or parking or not looking like an absolute bell end. Uh, critics at the time pointed out that the Flintstones' famous foot-powered car demonstrated smarter engineering. Yes. <laughs> Yet despite the negative reaction from his $110,000 prototype, Alex, what are you doing? Stop wasting your money. I'd be like, if I was on Dragon's Den or Shark Tank, as whatever it is, I'd be like, please, just tell me that you haven't wasted your entire life savings on this. <laughs> Yet despite, uh, Alex still seems to have determined to find investments to help fulfill the American dream of running outside on a treadmill. He even envisages a future in which the human-powered treadmill evolves into an everyday form of public transport. Good luck with that, Alex. On your bike, pal. What? Olympic sport was Alex doing? Was it like boxing? Because something's happened to him. Decathlete. Ten sports at once. Well, one of them is going to cause damage to his brain. Power balance bracelets. This is a debatable final entry into a list of inventions that nobody asked for, as the power balance company arguably didn't invent anything at all. Uh, but I would strongly suggest that they're guilty of reinventing some something that nobody asked for the first time around. Don't invent reinvent things that people don't buy. The power balance bracelets went on sale. Is this one of those fake things? Is this like, yeah, 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 you wear it and it gives you good energy? What sort of energy? Ah, oh, you know, good vibe. The oh, fuck? Stop. Stop! And now James Randi's dead. There needs to be someone new to fill the shoes of the great James Randi. If you don't know who James Randi is, I'm not going to explain it to you. Just Wikipedia it. You'll be glad you did. Absolute legend. What's the past tense of legend? Was an absolute legend. <laughs> Uh, they first went on sale around 2007, priced at $30 a pop. The product was a simple silicone band with a hologram embedded inside of it. It may not sound very exciting, but looks can be deceiving. Because the California-based company revealed that our bodies have a natural energy field which gets bombarded every day by negative energy from mobile phones and TVs and computers and newspaper headlines. This energy alters our frequencies and throws us off balance. The hologram inside the bracelet is designed to optimize the body's energy flow and improve your balance, strength, and flexibility. This may sound a bit dodgy to non-believers. No, it doesn't sound a bit dodgy, Danny. It sounds absolutely f***ing fake. But they backed it up some of these claims with proper scientific tests, with measuring and everything. No, they didn't. I already know they didn't. A large group of athletes were given a set of athletic tasks to perform without the bracelet and then asked to repeat the tests while wearing the holographic healing device. They all performed much better during the second round. There is a catch, and I'm waiting to find out what it is. I am so confident of myself right now that if it works out some other way, I'll slap myself in the face real hard. Live here on Business Blaze. There's probably a good reason for that. As demonstrated in another independent test carried out by Australian TV show the Tonight, Today Tonight in 2009. During this double-blind study, the participating athletes were again given two rounds of trials to perform, and this time they were wearing a type of bracelet for both rounds, but were never told when they were wearing a bracelet, bracelet containing the magic hologram. The athletes again performed significantly better during the second round, but had zero relation. Whether they were wearing a genuine power balance bracelet or just a generic rubber band, it was more to do with the fact that most athletes are generally better prepared for the second round of trials when they had a clearer idea of what to expect. Who could have known? At best, all the power balance had really done was to invent the placebo bracelet, which is not a million miles away from the concept of wearing a pair of lucky underpants. Yet some surprisingly high-profile names bought into the country, including Lamar Odin, never heard of him, from the Los Angeles Lakers, football poser David Beckham, uh, never heard of it, no, I, I, do, I do know David Beckham, Kate Middleton, Robert De Niro, and even Bill, Cl Bill Clinton? Get your sh Together. These other guys don't have to be smart for what they do. Bill Clinton, you were the f***ing president, mate. Although, come to think of it. Sales went through the roof during the first few years, but died down later on when the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission forced the company to change their marketing company copy in 2010. Power Balance admitted there is no credible scientific evidence that supports our claims. Therefore, we engaged in misleading conduct. Yes, you did. Just a year later, the company found themselves on the brink of bankruptcy when they faced a US lawsuit for fraud. Where's the fraud? Did they claim they did a test? I don't know, is there really fraud there? I mean, it's not its not ethically right, is it? Did they actually claim that it did these things or did they just say that our study 
showed that it did these things. Have a look at the study yourself. I don't know, it's probably a fine line, but also you, you don't want, you don't want that. Don't do this. The undisclosed settlement concluded with all the misled customers receiving entitlement to a full refund and the cost of the company was rumored to be somewhere between $1 million and $57 million. That is a big difference. Like $1 million, you'd be like, all right, that sucks, but I could eat it. $57 million? Dude, you have to sell a lot of bracelets. But despite this, you can still buy your own power balance bracelet from the restructured company today. It's probably cheaper to stick with the lucky underpants though, or if you're determined to try something new, go for a pair of lucky underpants to really get onto the path to Olympic glory. Since I bought my own pair, I've grown actually quite attached to them and I refuse to ever take them off in case I ever get struck by lightning or something. You'd have to pry them from my cold, dead hands. Very nice callback, Danny. This has been brought to you by Hello Fresh. I have been your boy with the blaze. If you'd like a certified legend t-shirt, uh, why not pop over to perchthemerch.co and get it hooked up. Thanks for watching. This is perfect! You created a brilliant product for Jake Paul!